Hey guys, my name is Robert. I have been journaling consistently for several years already. It's one of those practices that have been incredible for my own personal well-being. I journal both digitally in day one and also physically in notebooks. There's one part of my workflow that I have meant to share for a while, and this has to do with how I integrate both systems, my physical journal into the digital one. There's a lot that could be said about this. In fact, a while back, I published a class on my entire system, the different journals that I keep, the categories, how I do the tagging and all that. But in this video, I only want to focus on the actual process of digitizing my notebooks. I mostly do this because of backup purposes and also to take advantage of the search features that I can have inside of day one. Regardless of the system that you follow or the digital journaling app that you keep, I hope that this can give you some ideas that you can implement for yourself. If you watch through all of this, you may also learn about some apps or tips and tricks that may be helpful for things that are not specifically related to journaling. Something important that I must mention is that I journal every single day. Because of that, it was very easy for me to create a day one shortcut that grabs multiple PDF files and inserts them automatically in the correct order in their own separate entry inside the app. If you do not journal every day, then you will probably need to do that step manually. In the description of this video, I will be sharing an article on my newsletter with a link to my shortcut together with the apps and tools that I will mention here. So let's get started. Every single morning when I wake up, I journal on paper. Usually I write around four, sometimes up to six pages or more. I go through one of these notebooks around every two months. But something that I found very helpful is not to wait until I'm done with a notebook to start scanning. Years back, when I started doing this, I would actually use a flatbed scanner and try to get it all perfect looking. And you can definitely do that. But for me, it was just added friction. These days, what I do is just snap some photos with my phone of the pages after I finish writing them. I use a third-party camera app on my phone called Pro Camera. And this is just to get the best quality photos that I can get from my iPhone 14 Pro. Then I import them into a PDF file that I keep adding pages every day. The application that I use for this is called Genius Scan. I tested a lot of apps and most of them are very similar in features. But Genius Scan stood out for me because of its border automatic detection. I have to do very little after importing my photos because they are automatically cropped as long as I take them against a dark background. By the way, you can also take the photos inside the app itself, but after some testing, I discovered that I could get much better quality by taking them in another app and later importing them. Maybe one of the most important things to consider in this step is the numbering of the pages. For me, it's super important to have numbers in my physical journal. I am writing them on pen myself, even though it doesn't look very pretty. You can buy notebooks that already have numbers on them, but I was looking for bank paper, something very specific, and I could not find numbered pages with dots. So... I have to do this. What numbers allow you to do is to keep track of all the system. If you, by accident, forget to scan a page, you will notice it because at some point, the page numbers on the PDF file and the actual pages that you scanned will not match. This is also important at the time of bringing all of these files into day one or any application because ideally, we want to be able to open a PDF file and say, you know what? let me go find this in my notebook and do that without any issues. Because of that, it's also important to have a naming convention that is easy to keep track of. Let me jump to my computer and continue the process there. Okay, so let's say that I finished an entire notebook. I have that PDF in Genius Scan because I already took all the pictures, I already imported all of them. Now I can airdrop that PDF to my computer. And here, I have this file already. And I have to tell you that this is the one journal that I'm working on currently. So it's not the entire notebook, but for this example, it will be good enough. The naming convention that I use has four digits. The first two digits represent the year and the last two digits represent the journal number of that year. So 2405 means that it's the fifth journal that I started in 2024. Now, Genius Scan, the application that I was telling you on my phone, is great for border detection, 
But something that it doesn't allow you to do is set a size for all the pages. So they are all a tiny bit different and that bothers me a little bit. Let's try to fix that. We can open that file in preview and let's print it. We will not actually print on paper. I will select here the correct size, which is A5. I will select landscape, scale to fit. Okay, good. And here I have the option of saving as PDF. When I do that, as you will see, now all the pages are the same size and they have this padding around them, which is just easier on the eyes, especially later when I will be transcribing, just makes it a little bit more comfortable. Okay, I can get rid or move this original file to the desktop and this file, I do not want it with any extra characters. I want it exactly like that, 2405. That's important because later we will be renaming this file. So now the next step is splitting this big PDF into smaller PDF files, one for each separate entry. I have to make a parenthesis here and tell you that um, at this point also what I was doing before was optimizing the PDF because it can get pretty big. Um, and I was using one application that is called Club is fantastic. But since I use day one and day one stores all the files that I insert in my entries on their servers, it just saves me device space. So I don't have to worry about optimizing the files or making them smaller, sacrificing a little bit of quality. I don't have to do that anymore. Let's open this in PDF expert, which I like to use for splitting it. Now you don't have to use PDF Expert. There's another application that is very good and it's called PDF Gear. That one is free. What I'm looking for is an app that will allow me to have this view in grid and select multiple um, pages and drag them out. And the moment that I drag them out, as you can see, they create a new file that includes the page number. That's very, very important because we can keep track of everything and everything still stays organized. So what I will do now is just select the different entries and drag them out so that they create their own file. Now, what I will do is rename all of these files. Why do I rename them? Because I want them to be able to sort correctly. As you can see here, some of them have only one page and some of them have multiple pages. And when that happens, like this page 33, you can see it appears before page one and that will cause issues if I import this into day one using my shortcut. So I want to rename all of that. And for that, I use an application called a better finder rename. If you do not want to use this application, you can also use one that is called Transnomino. And that one is a free alternative. But for my case, I already made like a preset or a droplet. And again, this only works for my specific case. And I will be sharing this droplet or preset with you if you want to use the same application. I will just drag all of this on top of this journal rename. And then I will select rename all. Okay, after the rename is done, all of these files can now sort without any issue. Now it's time for me to finally run my day one shortcut. Before that, I want to remove this, which is the original file. I don't want to get confused. I only want all the separate entry files. And let's run the shortcut. The shortcut asks me for all of these PDF files. And remember that this will only work if you journal every single day like me. So it asks me for the first day of the entries that I'm importing. In this case, it's July 19th. I will select it here. Now it asks me for the last day and it's July 30th. Done. What this shortcut does is it 
calculates the amount of days and it will compare them to the amount of files that I have. And if there's some issue there, it will tell you like, you know what, there's some files missing, double check your files. And this avoids having problems down the line where you import everything in day one and everything goes in their wrong date. And let me just open day one just to confirm that everything is there. July 30th and July 30th, perfect. This is exactly this same file and it's on the correct date. The same with all the others, July 29th, and it matches the entry date. Correct, good, everything is there. And what I will do at this point is just leave this entry here for an entire year because day one has this on this day feature where it shows me what I wrote exactly one year ago. And then when that happens, I can open this entry and just transcribe using AI. I have one workflow that I have created in Alfred is called Kiki. And I use that for transcribing uh, using Whisper AI. And after that, I will run that through ChatGPT so that it enters some line breaks between paragraphs. But that's it. I mean, in the end, I will also add some of these here and I can add my own title, my title. Thank you so much for sticking with me through all of that. I hope that I didn't feel like I was rambling too much. Like I mentioned, this is something that I only go through once every couple of months, but it's been so worthwhile having this as part of my system. And I really hope that this is helpful to some of you. If you are interested in learning more about how I journal, I mentioned that I have a full Skillshare class that I will be linking in the description of the video. And of course, I would also like to share more about it here in this channel. Feel free to give me some feedback in the comments or ideas that you would like me to explore. Journaling has been such a rewarding practice, really. And I know that lately I am sharing a lot more about apps and technology, AI, personal knowledge management and all that. But I am very happy to share more about this area of personal growth. Be sure to subscribe for more videos. You can sign up to my newsletter for more frequent updates. Don't forget to check the description for a link to the article where I will be sharing the day one shortcut and the apps that I use. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.